While I was making a tutorial for the, or, or at least getting ready to start a tutorial for the Tiny Pandora design team, I wanted to make a Rainbow Skinner blend. And because of a couple of other projects I've finished up here recently, I happen to have all of the collars to go in this. You also can do it with fewer collars knowing which collar to put next to each other and what those two collars combined create. But this is my original piece and we'll work with it in the next video. Now several years ago, Jenny from um, Wishing Well Workshop did a little video one day on if you're not sure you have enough cane or skinner blend then add a little piece of translucent in there. And this is what I've done. My clay is rolled out on a number five on my atlas. And my translucent here is rolled out on a number three. So it's a little bit thicker. But what I'm going to do is incorporate the translucent into the Skinner blend with my pasta machine. And it will change, it'll lighten up the colors, but it'll give you more of a Skinner blend to work with. So if you're to the point where you think, oh no, I don't have enough of this to do what I need to do, just remember Jenny's little trick, and I'll uh, put this through the pasta machine in a little bit and come back and show you how it blends up. The next trick I saw was from Deb Hart on um, Clay Up on YouTube, on um, Facebook. She has a um, Facebook group called Clay Up, Deb Hart Clay Up, and she has been doing lives on Monday nights. And I watched her do a live a couple of weeks ago, and she did the same concept only used her original strong blend and added a little piece to the translucent. Again, this is rolled out on number three. This is rolled out on number five because I'm not really concerned of how light they go mixed with the translucent. For this little experience, I want to see what the difference is between blending a strong collar into more translucent or taking your strong collar and adding a small amount of translucent to that. So, let me get these all blended up and then I'll be back. I had a piece, like I showed you in a picture, of translucent clay that was a rectangle. It was four inches wide and eight inches long. And I took a quarter inch size off of this rainbow stripe. I'm still working on my rainbow blends. And I laid the stripe down like this onto the translucent clay. And I ran it through my pasta machine making a Skinner blend and this is what I came up with and as you can see it's quite a bit lighter it's real pretty looking it's like a misty looking thing and what I'm going to do I'm continuing with my um, color necklaces and this is a cutter from Mary Joy Coleman at ojoycreations.inc and I'll leave a link in the description below. And I have used this one cutter on something to do with the rainbow blend that I originally started with last week. And so far I think I have five of the uh, pendants or the cuff necklaces ready to uh, bake and I've got them on large bowls 
Let me get one real quick and I'll show you the ball. This is just a bowl from my kitchen. Get these right side up for you. And these were just blends from somewhere. These are Natasha beads that I spread out and made a veneer out of and put on there. This is another one. This is going to have water slides over it. And I've got the earrings ready to bank. This one is gorgeous. It was a Skinner blend. And I uh, silk screened the little design on it. That's from Tanya Treasure silk screen. And the rhinestone in the middle is new from tinypandora.com. And I have um, earrings to match it, too. My other necklace really isn't a rainbow blend. It's on another ball, metal ball. Those are the earrings for it. This was another rhinestone from tinypandora.com and I was taking some scrap clay that I had to make a back for one of these necklaces and came up with this. This came from actually the scraps from the Rainbow Blend and when this came out of the pasta machine I thought oh I can't destroy it so I thought the orange rhinestone looked really pretty on it so I had some little other crystals that I could put on the earrings to match it. And those will be baked as soon as I get this one done. Now, what am I going to do with this one? I'm going to silk screen it. And I'm going to silk screen it in a dark blue. And since my cutter will not reach the entire length of this silk screen completely. I got this silk screen out to use because I do believe I can match up the ends of this and come up with a complete silk screen. So let me get this silk screen real quick. You just apply pressure enough to get your paint through your screen. Off camera, I do have a bowl of soapy water ready to put my silk screen in as soon as I finish. This is an acrylic paint. Uh, so I want to keep this right at this edge because this is the edge I want to match up and give me a little bit more room. Now one of the most important things about silk screening something you can also use old credit cards or gift cards or anything like that in the smaller places I cut them up different sizes because sometimes I just want a little piece of a design on a silk screen and uh, you can do that like I did on that necklace I'm getting ready to bake with the yellow rhinestone in the middle. I just used this one on that silk screen design because that was the only one I wanted. So I needed something little to be able to maneuver in there. Okay, let me see if I can't get this up. That's pretty. And I actually think I'm going to let this dry before I try anything else. So I'll be back in 10 or 15 minutes when this is perfectly dry. Okay, my silk screen paint is dry. And I've carefully lined up the silk screen again to match 
right here where I need it just to give me a little bit more length. I'll put down a little bit more paint. I'm going to use my uh, credit card or gift card at this time. You know, sometimes in polymer clay we have happy accidents. Um, this turned out to be one of them. This was my silk screen piece I showed you a minute ago. And when I matched up the silk screen to extend the pattern, it got on the original paint where it shouldn't have. So I thought, okay, I'll just fold it and run it back through the pasta machine, get the blue paint worked in with the clay, and we'll sc silk screen it starting over. Well, I folded it because it was all dry. The paint from my silk screen was all dry. And um, let me turn that light away so you can actually see this. I folded it. I ran it through the pasta machine. And because I had 99.5% translucent, this is what I came up with. And I thought, oh, wait a minute, I can't work that paint back into the clay. This needs to stay as is. I love this. This is the design from the silk screen when I folded it back up and ran it through my pasta machine. And I ran the uh, silk screen part through on a number five. That's my sheet of the silk screen and my uh, Skinner blend. And then I put a backing on it. This is a Macon's texture sheet. And I ran it through on the clay with my, on my pasta machine. I put the texture sheet on my pasta. Ran it through my machine on a number zero. I have an atlas, so that's really thick. And I put them together. Made sure there wasn't any air bubbles down in between the two layers. And this is now going to be my necklace. I originally said this couldn't be repeated, but I did try it again, and I got pretty close. I can tell a difference, though. I mean, you're not wasting any clay. It just happened to be one of those accidents. Let me get that little dab of clay off of here. My clay cutter will fit on this. And again, this is my, uh, my collar cutter that I'm going to use. This time I am going to put uh, a layer, you can use saran wrap, plastic wrap, this happens to be press and seal. It leaves a little slight texture, which I'm fine with. And by doing it this way, it will um, give me a beveled edge. So, um, hopefully it'll go all the way down through and I won't have to put a border edging on this one. This one is just so cool from this silk screen. Let me uh, stand up and make sure this goes down through here. I'm using my acrylic block, the largest one I happen to have, to help me push this cutter down through. And I'm standing up over top of it and putting as much pressure as possible on it. So 
so I can get it to cut through both layers. Okay, now let's see what we have. Still going to use my X-Acto knife to make sure that it's all cut out. And I'm resting my X-Acto knife on top of the beveled edge here. I don't want to uh, cut through the bevel. That was my whole point of putting the uh, Press and seal on there. There we go. And I've got some left over for earrings. Now let me pull this up. Now, there's my beveled edge. Let me cut this little piece off right here. There we go. Here's the back. Here's the front. I'll just have to run my fingers around the edge to smooth that out so lesson learned on this one um, if you use a lot of translucent clay with your collar design which this was the size of my strip that I put from this piece. I cut just a strip this wide off and fit it on a sheet down at the bottom of 4 inches by 8 inches of translucent. And that was Primo translucent. Made a Skinner blend with that. Didn't add anything else to it. Did the... Um, silk screen design on it and messed it up so I decided to run it back through the pasta machine to blend it in and that's what I got and I absolutely love this okay everything I make and everything you make you should have a signature on it so you know that you made it and other people know that you made it. I hope you know by now I'm Apples. My nickname's been Apples probably for 40 years or more. So I have a Coors Roller stamp that has an Apple design on it. And I'm going to stamp it right here let me bring that up closer so you can see my little apple right here and that goes on everything that I do and I have several different apple stamps or stencils or whatever apples apples happen to be easy to find so um I have them in all different shapes and or not shapes but actually sizes so I can use them on different things so I see some earrings lurking at me here and maybe something out of this long piece. So let me get these cut out. Let me get this on a... I'm baking these on metal big bowls uh, in the oven to give me a slight curvature. I didn't want a huge tight curvature. I wanted an open up expanded more of a slight curvature. So let me get these baked and I'll come back and we'll put them together.
this is my finished necklace and I put these little charms on probably upside down compared to what everybody else would put them on with and I put some just little uh, rhinestones on there and I went on and completed beading one side of the necklace and I picked up some orange green and solid blue from the uh, Skinner blend with the silk screen on top as part of my beads work now let me show you what I did to get this I'm using the wildfire stringing it's a bead along and this is 0 .008 inches or 0 0.2 two zero millimeters and that's strong enough to hold this I uh, made my loop put on my crimp bead and we'll do this at the other end as well so you'll be able to see and I actually put on four of the cover crimp beads because I wanted that gold that silver space there and I've got my first metal bead on and everything I need to follow my pattern to complete this is right here in my little tray so as you see we're going to follow the pattern here and we've got four of these larger dark turquoise colored beads I wanted this uh, dark turquoise is the main color of the bead work and I'm just stringing my wire through the holes in the beads and I'm putting three of these on and follow me my pattern on the other side so here's the larger metal one let me find the hole then I did three of these little flat dark turquoise beads and I just strung them completely together I didn't uh, put any metal beads or anything in between these and I tried several different patterns before I came up with this one and all any shade of blue that I tried just didn't look right at all I tried several different ways to get this beaded and I just wasn't pleased with anything I was making and I felt like I needed to add some color because the necklace had that strip of color that's quite obvious Okay, so I'm matching up here I've got my three my three little flat ones and then my three these are almost like a kidney shape they're really cute okay now I'm going to start adding my colored beads And I'm just going to speed this up a little bit and uh, get towards the end of this and then I'll show you how to do uh, the crimp B and uh, wire guide and um, put the last uh, crimp covers on
crimping tube. You see that little silver thing right there? Your wire needs to go down through it. And then you take your wire guide and that's the thing that looks like I can get it picked up, it's so small. That's the thing that looks like a little horseshoe. And you put your, it has two little holes in it. Two little tubes on each side. See those little holes? Let me see if I can get it to focus. And you want to put your wire down one side, go up and around the top, the horseshoe shape, down the other side and your wire is right here and you're going to pull your one side down and bring your wire back down your wire goes back through your crimp tube Pull your crimp tube down because this is what is going to basically tie off all these beads and hook your ends up. Now I want to take my wire while I'm at this stage before I crimp that crimp tube down tight. And I want to run my wire back down through a couple of beads while well, I've got the space here to do so because you'll never get it in there once all this is tight because I want to cut my wire off and hide the ends down inside these beads We'll run the wire back through a couple of beads here and pull on it and that's what's going to pull all this tight and I've got my wire back down get this out of the way my wires back down through this metal bead and also this blue bead. So now I'm going to take my crimping pliers or you can use any regular pair of pliers. And I left a little bit of room there because I want to put two crimp cover beads on this end. I want to test my uh, crimp bead to make sure it's going to hold before I cover it up. So if it's going to come loose, it's going to come loose now, not when somebody's wearing it or. Can you see right here? Where the bead has got that opening. And you slide that over your crimp tube that you just crimped and push down. 
make sure it's closed and don't hide your crimp your crimping tube there and I'm going to put another one on there that's why I left the space or if you end up with unwanted space this is a good way to uh, fix your unwanted space now I'm going to put a little jump ring I'm going to use two pair of pliers and I'm going to open my jump ring front to back don't pull it open and I'm going to put the small jump ring or the smaller of the two jump rings on because I like to leave a little bit of room around whatever fastener I have on my necklaces and bracelets just to give the added room and manipulating whatever type of, of uh, class you have on there and I've got a bigger jump ring and I'm going to put it on to the smaller jump ring and then add my toggle end and close these up and when you properly close a jump ring you will actually hear it click now I've got one more jump ring right here to add the other end to my little charm here Again, I'm going to take my ends and I'm going to close them the same way I opened them front to back don't pull out on it and stretch it I'm going to take my ends over just a little bit and bring them back and you can feel that connection and that you can actually hear a little click and this one's done and I will put it and hang it. I made some earrings to go with it. And I'll show you the finished pieces. So thanks for watching. This has been an experiment. A test. But it has really, really, really been a fun project to do. So I hope you all decide that this is something that you'd like to do. I will. My next video is making six necklaces different styles from this same cutter so I'll link it into this video so you all have a good evening thanks for stopping by blessings